Good afternoon. Welcome to the Sunday Brunch. I'm your host, Alex Elkin. I want to welcome you this Sunday because we're going to have a heck of a good time. We have some really great guests. We've got Jennifer and we've got Karen from Free Family Radio. And Jora Lafleur joins us, who's a spoken word artist, going to uh, share with us from Studio 541 her next project. We're going to jump into the garden with Play-Doh and lots more. We're making pastrami fries today, you guys. So I don't know if you're, if you're tuned in just for that, but that's what I'm tuned in for because we're making pastrami fries from homemade smoked pastrami that we're going to show you later on. So let's get right into it. Uh, you know, I'm not much of a political guy. Usually if I'm listening to somebody spout out politics or lie to me for that long, I should walk away with a new car. <laughs> not the actress Tara Reid, but Tara Reid, who's accused uh, Vice President Biden of sexual assault, is now coming out against Hillary Clinton, who has endorsed Joe Biden, saying that Hillary is protecting a known sexual predator. Meanwhile, Bill is over there going, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, right? <laughs> like, I can't believe she totally do that. That's weird. <laughs> uh, in other news, political news, President Trump has ordered all meat processing plants for now to stay open during the pandemic. And there is no way I'm not going without my KFC and I want my chicken nuggets, okay? <laughs> But closing the meat plants and meat processing plants would not affect KFC or McDonald's in any way. <laughs> this pandemic is a scary time, and it's scary for adults, but it's also scary for our kids. you got to remember that. They're the little ones, and they don't always understand what's going on. I've got three little ones, 15, 12, and a four-year-old. And i got to tell you, it's difficult explaining the whole COVID-19 and crisis with the virus to a four-year-old sat her down and she wanted to know why she couldn't go to the park and i had to explain to her well remember when we talked about the boogeyman and the scary monster living under your bed and how those those things weren't real <laughs> well right well, now right there's, now, there's a, a, scary, a scary deadly, deadly virus, virus in, the, in the, world the world that's living in your closet and under your bed and it's very very real. It's killing lots of people. It could kill me, your mama, your brothers, or you. So, sweetie, that's why we can't go to the park. You gotta be gentle with children, I think is the point I'm trying to make. Is that too much? Is that too much? Because I didn't get, I didn't, you know, I didn't go too harsh with the kid. It's not like I'm sitting here talking about, you know, I stay awake at night worrying about the black vans showing up and people coming out with AK-47s, <laughs> blasting away our front door because all I've got is a 22 rifle my grandfather left me that he built me when he was 19. Well, what the hell that going to do? And my four-year-old's going to look at me and go, oh, no, no, what a 22. <laughs> and she doesn't know what an AK is. She can't even point it out on the alphabet yet. An AK-47 against a 22? Hey, look, it's going to come down to the point where either, look, either we're getting into a gunfight, I'm going to die and you're going to kill my family, or I'm just going to give you my gun and eventually we're going to get marched off and die somewhere else. I don't want to deal with either of those factors, but this is what I'm dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis as the father of this household. Do you understand? Anyway, so I think she's going to have a lot to talk about with her therapist this weekend. And, um, I'm proud of the progress that they're making. Uh, news from South Korea about North Korea. Leader Kim Jong-un, who was uh, thought to be dead, is actually now... Uh, quoted as being alive and well. Those are their direct quotes, alive and well. Uh, the dictator usually is not described in such a fashion. If they're going to use alive and well in the same sentence, it's usually he's having his political dissenters eaten alive <laughs> and Kim Jong is well fed. <laughs> that would be alive and well, in, I don't know, in, in my book. Uh, it is, it is said that he is out of the coma. He's actually uh, up and about. He popped out of his hospital bed, saw his shadow, so that means six more weeks of tyrannical dictatorship in a nightmare. 
Uh, this is this is uplifting news here in America. Uh, Walt Disney World and Disney Parks are in talks of reopening as long as they follow some mandated new rules, like uh, the employees or cast members, as they call them, are going to have to start wearing masks. So <laughs> that's going to be a lot of fun because who knows when they're going to be sticking their tongues out at you. They're going to be having to wipe down benches and guardrails and doors a lot more often than they used to, which was, I think, once a recorder. <laughs> and, of course, they're going to have to remove all the fun. <laughs> okay, because uh, that's not going to, it's not going to be any fun. Well, we've got a great show for you on the Sunday brunch today. Uh, remember, we got Karen and Jennifer coming at you from Fair Family Radio. Musical guest is Jora Lafleur, who's our spoken word poet. So we're getting into the garden with Play-Doh. Of course, we're making pastrami fries today, you guys, so I'm excited. You should be, too. Stick around on the Sunday brunch. Hey, I'm Alex Elkin for the Sunday Brunch, and you know, we couldn't do the Sunday Brunch if it weren't for our generous sponsors, TJ's Organic Gardens, and, of course, Business Finance Group. Their generosity keeps this thing going and allows us to bring us to you. Thanks so much. Well, we have an exciting show on this beautiful Sunday. That's right. Uh, it's the Sunday Brunch. I'm Alex Elkin. I'm your host. Uh, today, we've got wonderful guests, local people here in our community that are doing good and great things. We've got Karen Rainsong and Jennifer James Long. Uh, Karen Rainsong is with Fair Family Radio. Fair Family Radio, as opposed to Unfair Family Radio, right? <laughs> Where it's just a bunch, it's just a bunch of teenagers walking around going, "God, this is so unfair! This radio is so unfair!" God. What what is what is Fair Family Radio? Does everybody get to listen to it at the same amount of time? Fair Family Radio is a nonprofit. We are separate from Oregon Country Fair, actually. But what we do is we exist to bring that fair magic to people year round. So we produce podcasts and video casts, free streaming content, so people can just dive in and kind of tap into fair magic whenever they feel like it throughout the year on our website and on um, all of the streaming podcast channels like iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. Oh, so they can find the fair anytime, anywhere. Yeah, I like that. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's actually really cool because that's certainly something that they didn't have when the fair first started. Now, the fair originally started in, I, I'm looking at my notes, 38 BC, right? I mean, it's been around a while. <laughs> yeah, maybe that long. Maybe. Yeah. When, when well, people, they came out of their caves, they brought their drums, they all, they all cooked up some kale, and it was a great time. And they just go. grew from there and it progressed. <laughs> actually, we predate right? kale. <laughs> so um, we started Fair Family Radio maybe five or six years ago, and it actually didn't begin with Fair Family Radio. It started by founding KOCF, which is an LPFM station out in Veneta that is run by the Oregon Country Fair. And that's actually what leads to a lot of confusion and why people don't understand that Fair Family Radio is a separate entity from KOCF and the Oregon Country Fair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now, Oregon Country Fair is probably not happening this year. That's what I hear, at least not out in public. What are you doing to battle this just absolutely terrible blow to the Eugene, <laughs> well, I say to the world community? Well, actually, this is the perfect opportunity for Fair Family Radio to step up and really become a platform and do more of what we're already doing, which is showcasing Fair Magic. So we're doing this project called Fair on Air, and we are gonna bring onto the airwaves, onto the streaming channels, um, musicians, artists, storytellers, jugglers, poets, anybody that uh, is performing at fair typically or was scheduled this year to perform at fair so that we can bring that content live for people to watch from the comfort and safety of their homes so we can okay, still two, experience two, a little bit of it. Two, so two questions, uh, number one, uh, we went over this last week, and I, I think it's very important that we get this off the table right now. Uh, do either of you know Batman? <laughs> Jennifer? Not personally, but I have seen him on my screen many times. <laughs> you see, I, 
I get a lot of that. I get a lot of that. Not everybody knows him. A lot of people have heard of him. I heard of a night, and my, my, my grandmother, she said, oh, I know Batman. He's, good. He's been around for a long time, Batman. Mr. Batman, he makes good locks. <laughs> Don't forget comics, dude. See, that's what I was right? wondering. That's the word I didn't right? hear. That's the word. Yeah. I, I, I was a bit, I was a bit perturbed, but I wasn't going to say anything because you're my guest. You're my guest. <laughs> I, I, w I wasn't going to say it, but no, yeah, there's got to be com comedy yeah. and fair. For sure. Otherwise, totally. it would to that'd totally be unfair. It's so unfair. <laughs> well, you know, the spoken word stage is... Now, listen, if we're going to delve into comedy, we can't be mincing. We're you can't cross the streams. Okay, this is not, this is not, not Ghostbusters, okay? Ghostbusters, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta step back a moment, girl. You're getting crazy, okay? You're invited, Alex. You're, you're invited. Well, thank you. That, I think it's, I, it, it's a, you're allowed to cross the streams if the key master is present. Oh, yeah. okay. All only right. Well, well <laughs> as, as long as there's no Dana here, only Zool. <laughs> one, time right. I went to, one time I went to the fridge and I couldn't find my Danon, but it was yogurt. <laughs> right the terrible joke hey uh, Gen jennifer uh you take pictures of beautiful people uh, and make them more beautiful and tell us a little bit about your business and where we can find you yeah so i'm a professional photographer started photography in the 90s um but didn't take it up full time until about eight years ago maybe nine um so i photograph everyday people I, I don't really work with models. I work with women who have a nine to five job, who are stay at home moms, uh, who have a change in their life that they're going through and they want an experience. And that's what I give them. Uh, we begin with planning, uh, because we do something on the spur of the moment in the studio, unless you've got it on hand and ready. So we do a lot of planning ahead of time and the day of their shoot, we do full hair and makeup. We have a full wardrobe here and we have a great time. Getting back to, so you, you take like average, you're saying just run of the mill ladies, nine to five work day ladies that are out there grinding and working hard, raising families uh, or, or raising kids. And you, you give them a moment where they get to feel special and beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Oh, God, that, that sounds fantastic. I, I got to <laughs> sign up for that. Magical. <laughs> it's really magical. She's amazing. And you know what? If she was working with me, she'd have to be a magician. Now, <laughs> so actually, I won um, a competition back in October, November. It's an international competition for headshot photographers. So... You yeah. won an international competition for headshot photographers? Yeah. Well, pin a rose on your nose there, Jennifer. That's a, that, that's a big deal. <laughs> I think, I mean, that's kind of, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to brag, but we are kind of, you and I, we're kind of flocking in the same birdageness uh, <laughs> since I am the winner of a prestigious international comedy competition. Nice. I mean, you know, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly, like peas and carrots, how we're just going together. Now, if we could just find somebody better looking to take pictures of, we would be in business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's still a work in progress right now. Um, it's still in the beginning stages, but um, we have purchased the domain faironair.com, which we'll be linking up with our standard regular website, fairfamilyradio.com. So you can go there to find all of the videos and audio and as well on your favorite um, podcast apps, like on your phone, if you like iTunes or Spotify or whatever, just search for Fair Family Radio and you'll find us and you'll find the Fair On Air project. This, this is fascinating. I'd love to talk to you more about this off air. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining us, Karen Rainsong. Uh, Jennifer, tell us about uh, how we can find you, Eugene Headshots, and get getting our pictures taken and just making us look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so I've got two websites for my two brands. Um, the first is Studio Sura, S U R A dot com, and the other is Headshots Eugene dot com. And I actually have a third site for high volume headshots because I know companies need photographs of all their employees, and so I go on location and work with companies through Headshots Oregon dot com. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank you, Karen and Jennifer, for joining us. 
two local business ladies that are still rocking it. And in spite of the fact that we're all supposed to stay home and wash our hands and keep very, very <laughs> safe, they're still out there pushing through and, and making things happen, Captain. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciate you guys. You're, you're strong members of the community. And we thank you for joining us here on the Sunday Brunch. Coming up next, well, we're just going to have to find out because we'll be right back. How does a brand become a way of life? Who determines your power? What point does a machine become a part of you? When does highly efficient engineering take you back to your very beginnings? Where does a car company begin to teach you how to breathe? Introducing the 2020 Ventilator by GM. Try and catch your breath. Hello, good people. It's Plato here in the garden. It is a pleasure to see you all today. If you tuned in last week, we talked about how to plant your veggie start, your baby plant start that you started from seed, how to take that plant and put it in the soil. And we talked about how the weather was perfect for transplanting these starts into the outside world. Well, it's a week later and the weather has changed. It's colder, it's wetter, and if you look at the lows each night, the lows are projected over the next few days to be between 38 and 43 degrees, and that is danger territory for baby plant starts. And so today, we're gonna talk a little bit about what to do when the weather changes in the spring. And first off, I wanna say that this happens all the time to gardeners. This is a natural part of the process. In the spring, the weather is good for a week and the weather is cold for a week. And you have that fluctuation between so sunny, warm days and cold, wet days. Now, farmers are experts at reading this, but us gardeners who have jobs and kids and other obligations beyond just tending to plants, how do we adapt when we plant a bunch of our baby plant starts and then the weather turns? First off, if you have not planted your baby plant starts yet, but you have them in their trays and you take them outside to absorb some natural sunlight in the day, I would encourage you to take those plants over these cold nights coming up and bring them indoors at night. Put them in your greenhouse, put them in your house, give them some protection. Now when the weather gets better, what I encourage you to do is like when the lows are about 50 degrees, I'd say leave those plants out for a few nights before you put them in the ground so that they can harden off and develop this uh, resiliency to handle the coldness. But if you have not hardened off your plants and you already put them in the ground like we talked about last week, there's still some things you can do and I wanna show you a little trick right now. So I cut off the bottom of this plastic root beer jug and I put it over this little bean plant I'm gonna take the lid off so you get some fresh air and this will trap the warm air it'll trap the air of what temperature is today in here and it will help protect your plants on cold nights like this your babies you can kind of dig it in the ground if it's windy like it is right now try to prevent your leaves from touching the plastic and when the weather gets better you can take it back off so it's play-doh here that's a little tip from the garden good luck out there much love this is my favorite flavor of coffee
like, I'm good. Asterix, there's a global pandemic. It's really a uh, uh, brutal, just hardcore kind of rubric. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Funny banter. I guess, I guess we're all right since we're in the middle of biblical world ending. Other than that, <laughs> how is everything else, Mrs. Lincoln? I know, we're just getting into it. Uh, we're, we're talking with Jorah Laf uh, LaFleur uh, from this, uh, on the Sunday brunch. Uh, I'm Alex Elkin, your host. And you, when you used to perform, when you used to be a performer, uh, what, <laughs> isn't that terrible? Mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what did you feed off of that you're having trouble finding now with this change? Uh, it's it's just connection, you know. Performance for me has always been about connection, and I I have been um, very much centered on being a live performer for you know the past twenty years. I've been really for various reasons, you know, some of them really legitimate, and some of them more just kind of like my own fear based or not getting it together. I've been really resistant to like I don't make videos, I don't do a lot of digital stuff. And, uh, <laughs> no, I, I actually, I am very good. I mean, I, you know, I've been thinking about how it's like we're all being impacted so differently. Like everyone's being impacted, maybe for the first time ever. We're all being impacted, but of course we're all experiencing very different levels of impact. And I think just the basic fact that, you know, everyone in my immediate uh, family and friends is currently healthy, you know, come on. That's the, I'm good, right? And then it moves on from there. <laughs> well, good. Jora, you, you got your priorities straight because that, that's what you're supposed to say. As long as everyone's healthy, um, that's, what, that's what's important. Forget the fact that I haven't worked in months and I don't know where rent is coming from. I'm glad everyone is washing their hands like an adult. <laughs> I do. Good for you. Um, I don't have children, Alex. <laughs> you have no children? Oh, she's got no children. No, I'm not. I probably won't. But what I'm saying is that I think when you don't, when you don't become a parent, you, there's this kind of Peter Panning that happens where, you know what I mean? Like, like I recognize, like, it's a very real, in some ways, I'm not like a full-fledged adult because I'm not responsible for other living beings. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I have been singing the praises of the bidet for years. <laughs> How does that song go? Uh, well, it's it's actually it's more of a comedian spoken word comedy skit, uh, you know, set. But I could put it to, I could put it to some lyrics and music if I wanted to, if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to. Right. I mean, and like comedy and poetry, they're just like spoken song. You know. You know what though? Hey, listen. Comedy, comedy, and poetry are exactly the same. Comedy has a certain end. It's you know, it's supposed to make you laugh. Poetry, I mean, it's got to make you feel something. But both of them, you're whittling down the words to the very bare minimum so you can get your point across. Is that not correct? I'm like a professional sayer of stuff, so I feel like I've really explored most of the uh, ways to use words to connect to an audience other than uh, doing straight stand-up. And, and it's the one that I respect the most because I think it's the hardest. And it has a lot to do with what you just said, which is like, okay, in a spoken word piece, you are achieving your goal if you just make a connection and the audience feels with you. But in comedy, I just feel like it's like becomes very binary. Like either they laughed or they didn't laugh. There's no like they had ennui or they felt your melancholy or they like, right. like, like they laughed or they didn't laugh. Like I yeah. feel like we all have the most brutal, just hardcore kind of rubric for was I, did I have a successful performance? So I, I have so much respect for comedians. Jerry Seinfeld said it best, I think. Comedy is just like baseball. At the end of the night, everybody knows the score. <laughs> Right? I mean, look, you know if you did well or if you didn't do well. If they're walking out and they're looking at the floor, you probably need to work on your act. Where are you not going to be performing next or where will you be performing next? <laughs> uh, last spring, in conjunction with Studio 541, I filmed an interview series 
And that interview series is called Musicians in Pie. And it's going, the first episode of that will finally be released this, uh, this Sunday evening. So it'll be on the other end of the brunch. Well, uh, I think we've got a preview of that possibly coming up, so we will get to that in just a moment. Genre la fleur. I want to say it like that because it just, it's like, uh, it's like silky, uh, delicious chocolate milk coming off of your tongue. Just genre la fleur. Uh, this beautiful, uh, uh, is spoken word artist. Uh, sounds like we're about the same age. we weave on destined eve like spells that foretell what is hiding riding backwards in time writing already written lines in the eternal journal of memories not yet created faded fantasies and fantastic fables unable to make them known, buried like bones still breathing, adrift on black water seething, beneath bright like how streaming beams from the subliminal. Have you ever dreamed of a screen as big as the sky, flown beyond the naked eye into salad butterfly wings? Bringing storm across the globe, apocalypse road, four horsemen in the stable, willing and able, climate on the brink, past to present in a blink, the ship could surely sink. have people checking that out because you've been very fun and informative and talented here on this just our small segment that we had you here I, I have an admiration because you it seems like you understand the uh the need and well the necessity of energy on stage the audience only gives you as much as you give them and so it like you said it's a it's a it's a circle thing mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, it's a job. I mean, it's part of it. And that's what I appreciate about I think in the best possible sense, I think it needs to be looked at as how am I adding value to the room? 
Like what is, what is what is my offering? Did I show up and do my job? And if my job is to open a door for us to connect, it's different than sitting down having a conversation with your friend, mm -hmm. but it's not a terrible third best thing. So uh, <laughs> on my, you know, on my uh, website, you sign up for my email uh, newsletter and I am going to start creating some content for the first time. It's just like a commitment that I'm making in the coming months. So if that interests you at all, I will finally start doing that. <laughs> I'm interested. Where can I sign up for your newsletter? JoyLafleur.com. JoyLafleur.com, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time out to, to come speak with us on the Sunday brunch. Such a pleasure, Alex. Thank you very much. I hope we get to chat at another time. It's it's really, uh, uh, it's just my favorite flavor of conversation. Funny banter yes okay. we played comedy ping pong you and me and we did good <laughs> we did very good